please tell me how an RBMK reactor explodes. Not a meltdown, an explosion. Well, now I could explain this in a very non-technical and non-scientific manner, after all, I've read quite a bit about the disaster. But the first question we have to ask ourselves should be, what exactly is an RBMK reactor and how does it work? RBMK from Russian means high power channel type reactor. It is a graphite moderated nuclear power reactor designed and first built by the Soviet Union in 1950s. Graphite moderated nuclear power reactor, like the RBMK, use graphite as the neutron moderator. The moderator is the material that slows down neutrons to an energy level suitable for sustaining a nuclear chain reaction. In contrast, other types of nuclear power reactors use different materials such as regular water or heavy water, so deuterium oxide. One of the main differences between a graphite-moderated reactor and the other types of nuclear power reactors is the way that the nuclear chain reaction is controlled. In a graphite-moderated reactor, the control rods, which absorb neutrons and help to regulate the reaction, are inserted into the core vertically. In other types of reactors, the control rods are typically inserted horizontally. The RBMK is a pressurized water reactor with individual fuel channels, rather than a single pressure vessel as in a typical pressurized water reactor. Another difference is that graphite moderated reactors, exactly like the RBMK, have individual fuel channels rather than a single pressure vessel. This design allows for more flexibility in the arrangement of the fuel rods and the control rods, but then again it also makes the reactor more susceptible to certain types of accidents. So you may ask, why did they use RBMK if Chernobyl reactor core number 4 exploded? There were multiple factors behind the disaster, including the flaw that was the final reason. But overall, nuclear energy in the 1950s and following decades was not something as safe as today, and the science behind it was one of the most important and well-guarded secrets of every nation that had it. So, Soviet Union decided that this would be the best option, given the resources they had, or more likely didn't have. Today, if you would have to choose which type of nuclear reactor should we build, we have many more options. But then again, there are quite a few factors that have to be taken into consideration. Some of them might be, for example, the availability of the fuel, the cost of construction and operation, the local regulations and safety requirements, and the specific electricity needs of the region where the reactor will be located. Each type of the newer nuclear power reactor has its own set of advantages and disadvantages, and the most appropriate reactor type will depend mostly on the specific circumstances and the project. For example, heavy water reactors can use natural uranium as fuel, which is more abundant and less expensive than enriched uranium or plutonium, but heavy water is more expensive to produce than light water. On the other hand, light water reactors are relatively simple and inexpensive to build and operate, but they typically require enriched uranium or plutonium as fuel. So, what about the other types of the reactors? How are they different from the RBMK? There are many different types, but let's just focus on a selected few and compare them to the USSR design. There are HWRs, heavy water reactors. For example, PHWRs, pressurized heavy water reactors, BHWRs, boiling heavy water reactors, SCWRs, supercritical water reactors. We have also LWRs, light water reactors, and the main types are BWRs, boiling water reactors, and PWRs, pressurized water reactors. We will tell more about them later, in another episode, as this would require a better basic knowledge that we want to share with you. But let's compare them with each other. We have focused on four aspects of each type of the reactor, so you could easily see the differences. First, type of neutron moderator. In the RBMK, it's graphite. In the PHWR and BHWR, it's heavy water. In PWR and BWR, it's light water. Number 2. Type of fuel used in the reactor. In RBMK, it's natural uranium or enriched uranium. In PHWR, it's natural uranium. In BHWR, it's natural uranium or enriched uranium. In either PWR or BWR, it's enriched uranium or plutonium. Number 3. Arrangement of fuel and control rods. RBMK has individual fuel channels and vertical control rods. All the other reactors have single pressure vessel and horizontal control rods. 
Number 4. Production of steam, which then helps to generate the power. In RBMK, PHWR and PWR, the steam is produced in separate steam generators. In BHWR and BWR, the steam is produced directly in the reactor. There is also a void coefficient of reactivity, which is also important. But similar to describing specific types of reactors, we should make a whole episode about it. Especially having in mind that this term was used many times in HBO's Chernobyl and many of you may know it. It just deserves a separate video. But as an interesting addition, I can mention that in 2021, there were still several RBMK reactors that were in operation in Russia and in Ukraine. To name a few. Leningrad Nuclear Power Plant, Russia. There are four RBMK-1000 reactors with a total generating capacity of 4000 megawatts. In Kursk Nuclear Power Plant, in Russia, there are two RBMK-1000 reactors. In Smolensk Nuclear Power Plant, in Russia, there are also two RBMK-1000 reactors. In Rivna Nuclear Power Plant, in Ukraine, there are four RBMK-1500 reactors with a total generating capacity of 6000 megawatts. In Khmelnytsky Nuclear Power Plant, in Ukraine, there is one RBMK-1000 reactor. It's worth noting that these particular reactors have undergone various safety upgrades and modifications since they were originally built, and they are subject to a regular safety inspections to ensure that they are operating safely. However, also many RBMK reactors built in the Soviet Union and the Eastern Europe have been decommissioned, probably due to either costs of the modernization or the safety reasons. So this is it for today guys. I hope you liked what you heard and saw. Leave a comment below if you want us to talk about some specific subject in one of the next videos. Remember, stay safe and see you next week.